I think a lot of folks will probably focus on threat operations use cases, although I got a few favorites in there. But, you know, one of the ones that I really like is I was working with a, a CISO in a large manufacturing OT environment, and he was really trying to make the uh, business case to his board for additional budget for part of a security program uh, where his CIS controls had a low maturity score. And his strategy, which I thought was very good, was to kind of augment that investment um, be, to be able to get lower cybersecurity premiums as a result of kind of demonstrating progress uh, and, and improving that uh, maturity. So one of the ways that we did that is we looked at his whole list of CIS controls and we were able to kind of, you know, write some specific prompts um, to basically take his cybersecurity controls that were equal to zero to a three. Uh, We were able to provide him very specific recommendations and implementation steps as far as how to do that. So then he had a kind of a roadmap as far as execution across those low areas of maturity. Now that's very interesting and helpful and, and, told us that that probably saved him about 160 to 200K in consulting uh, dollars. Um, But what was ever more useful is we were able to take his cyber insurance application and cross-reference the things that the insurer cares about with those controls then. So we had that Venn diagram specifically of the five or six specific controls that he needed to focus on to satisfy both the insurer and to kind of mature his program as well too. So he was able to take that as a very data-driven business case to the board of directors and ultimately was able to significantly reduce his uh, insurance premiums as a result too. So that was an interesting you know, kind of a use case that was maybe not something that I actually thought of um, initially, but in working with our client uh, actually drove a really positive outcome for him. Yes, where to start on use cases, uh, because uh, <laughs> the way I see it, there's a vast pool of uh, use cases to pick from. Uh, hence making the question worthwhile. But um, at least for me, one of the uh, the, the major use cases that I see is uh, basically within uh, the, the detection products uh, that we see out there. So uh, the ability to present, aggregate, and uh, somehow collect uh, all of the information, especially in the network segment, actually, all of that huge pools of information from the network scanning, network detection response, uh, vulnerability management, so on, that whole network segment and funnel it down that into an AI agent that can help you strategize and help you target as an analyst, what are the threats that we are uh, detecting here? Um, Because when you're looking at a network segment, you have virtually millions and millions of indicators, uh, both of compromise and just of natural uh, stance. So uh, definitely want to uh, give that one a purpose that uh, AI within the network segment, aggregation and collection of information to speed up the process of managed detection response or SOC services. Uh, huge shout out for that. And that's actually one of the places that the industry has already gone quite far in. So you can get something viable that's been tested and developed quite far along already. That's at least, um, that would be my number one pick now that I have to choose one. <laughs> Heaton. Yeah, so I, I think that, I still think one of the biggest problems with cybersecurity and AI in general is always the people behind it, right? We keep talking about people in the loop I think we're always going to need people in the loop because we always got people behind it. And that's where a lot of mistakes come from. So my best use case is we developed a system to where when people get assessed for doing jobs like threat hunting, pen testing, sock work, whatever it is, we went and hired 100 people that are experts, 100 people that are mid-year professionals, three to five years, and 100 people that are absolute beginners, put them in a lab for a week, had them do all these different exercises based on what their expertise is recorded that into a database, all of their activity, their decision-making, vectorize it. Now we have an assessment system to where if you want to verify yourself as a SOC analyst or a pen tester, you go through our verification system, you do all these challenges and these these exercises, and how you approach problem solving, all of those things are tracked against that massive database of expert beginners and mid-level professionals that did that. And we assess you, the, the AI assesses you based on that. So we have people coming in saying they've got 10 years experience doing SOC analyst work or 
10 years experience pen testing, but they assess at the level of someone that's been doing it for like six months, right? So we can show them the, the metrics of like, look, you know, while you, you have it 10 years on your resume, your operational execution looks like you've been doing it for like less than a year. So sorry, either we can't hire you or we can't pay you the $400,000 a year salary that you demand because you've been in the industry 10 years because you can't actually do the job. So that's my favorite use cases because it's something we recently rolled out in our training systems. So uh, my favorite use case uh, always gets uh, some interesting reactions. So I want AI to put me out of the vulnerability management business completely. Okay. And here's how I wanted to do it. I want the software I buy to not have vulnerabilities in it when I get it. And so I want the software OEMs to use AI to do the vulnerability identification before they send me the software. And furthermore, I don't want to be punished for using the software too long and have to pay more for that thing they call extended support. So, and it's only, the only reason I do that is because I have to in certain situations, especially when this software ends up in OT environments. Think of the world I came from in Carnival, where I had these massive ships and uh, these massive engines and engine rooms and bridge systems. I couldn't, I couldn't go in and update that software. I could stop the ship. So I want the software to come without vulnerabilities in the first place. I want to be out of the vulnerability management business. Um, and uh, I think I, I can't see a reason why AI can't play a role in that. What would everybody do, Greg, on Patch Tuesday, though? I mean, that would just. <laughs> well, yeah, we would sit down. We wouldn't have those people doing that. It's You guys know how frustrating it is, how easy it is, and how you can never win. It doesn't matter. You you could do a great job and go in front of your board and say, I patched 200,000 vulnerabilities in the last week, and 350,000 arrived. So I, I lost ground. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable. It, it went, now, we have the tools. We have the visibility. We have the information. And again, I'm talking not only about known vulnerabilities, and I'll right. talk later about another aspect of that, that this is, we're, we're past the point where this is acceptable any longer. It has to be addressed at the source. And the source is when the software is developed. Why can't AI play a role in that? I'll buy in, I'll buy in Greg um, dream, even though I suspect that we are going to keep on finding vulnerabilities here and there. And if we get rid of the standard vulnerabilities as we have seen them so far, there will be new popping up in the agentic system because they are, they are bound to produce some sort of vulnerability anyway. I, uh, yeah, I agree. I think, Greg, I think your dream is, is closer than you might realize because it's goes back to the very first thing I said, which is we have agents now already scanning software, constantly looking for those vulnerabilities, including finding zero days. And I think the challenge we've had traditionally is, you know, the, the, we find zero days on the on the white hat side as well. Microsoft finds zero days in their product. They're not all found by, you know, the bad threat actors. The problem is, is most of them are found by bad threat actors, which means we're still behind. So, so I think using agentic AI to find those vulnerabilities proactively, you know, to write those zero days proactively on the white hat side, I think that's going to get us close to your dream. Uh, I'll take the other side, because even if even if your dream isn't as close as we all want it to be, and yes, we want it to be there. Um, my favorite use case is the opposite side of that coin, which is patch management gets a heck of a lot easier with with agents, right? Agents that can go look at previous configurations and say, some human said, I'm allowed to patch in this configuration. This new patch, this new workaround looks like that old one. Suggest it to the human and get approval. Eventually, just do it autonomously. And that is going to cut out a lot of the toil that uh, security teams need to deal with. Especially around patch prioritization as well, right? When you're understanding kind of what's actively being exploited, you know, is there proof of concept available? How hard is it to exploit that particular vulnerability? Because, you know, let's face it, there's a lot of vulnerabilities that show up in that, you know, um, in that line line item that are never going to get exploited, right? So where do you spend your time and how do you spend that time is really, you know, to your point, Michael, I think, um, going to be probably the most immediate where place where we're going to get some of that relief. 
Yeah, I mean, it's an it's an interesting change now from what used to be automation, where where we could scan the infrastructure, figure out where we want to patch, and write an automation in order to deploy that patch over the greater infrastructure. But you still needed a human to then write that automation. To now, you don't have to, right? Now, an eight or soon an a, an agent will be able to say, "Hey, you did this last time and approved it. This looks the same." We'll, you know, we as the agent will figure out how to deploy it. So, I mean, to me, to me, that's uh, that's exciting. It's a little bit scary, right? Because some of it's going to get done in ways that are going to introduce new vulnerabilities because we didn't we didn't uh, confirm, check, recheck, sandbox, fill in the blank. But uh, okay, so at least all of us on this call are going to have uh, employment for the rest of our careers. Daniela, we missed you. That's for sure. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that's for sure. But um, I guess that at this point is worth, you know, mentioning then, you know, the need of, you know, distinguishing between, you know, autonomy, le levels of autonomy. Uh, you know, all of us are, you know, were um, witness of what happened um, not long time ago with CrowdStrike. So I'm um, amassing massive rollout of a, of a patch that has caused billions of, uh, of, of dollars of damages. Um, so that means that, yes, uh, those are going to be uh, all opportunities for us to uh, be quicker uh, in the way in which we uh, do our job. Uh, nevertheless, again, I would, I I'm, I would again uh, call for, for uh, to be a bit cautious here. Now, uh, talking about... Um, Use cases. I mean, the, the all, all the one mentioned were like pretty pretty much spot on, uh, and certainly everything that has to do with you know big volume of data, uh, velocity, and diversity of of the input uh, is going to benefit from uh, from automation. Uh, perhaps a use case that uh, it wasn't necessarily mentioned uh, is the one on uh, on on compliance, uh, which I don't claim to be my favorite, but that is another space where. Uh, uh, there is a lot of unnecessary repetition, a lot of manual work, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of opportunities to uh, to do uh, to in to include automation and, and include like agentic workflow uh, in order to make sure that we are properly testing and auditing uh, and uh, our systems and demonstrating compliance. Uh, but again, I, I will I will call for I will call for for uh, cautious uh, being cautious. Uh, concerning the level of autonomy that we are going to attribute to our agents.